Talking with investigators, the new details tonight in the case of the killings of two Kansas moms. Tiffany Adams, the prime suspect in the murders of Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly, gave a recorded statement after she was arrested. Investigators say Butler was locked in a custody battle with Adams, her children's grandmother. She is now one of the four suspects now charged with murder and kidnapping. News Nation correspondent Caitlin Becker has been pouring through these documents and walks us through what she has learned. Well, Natasha, investigators are firming up their case against the four individuals accused in the murders of the two Kansas moms who went missing March 30th. We're learning now that one of the suspects, Tiffany Adams, allegedly confessed to law enforcement that she was responsible for the killings. Two weeks after their car was found abandoned on a rural road in Oklahoma, the bodies of 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly were discovered in a cow pasture owned by Adams' boyfriend, Tad Cullum. Adams and Cullum were arrested along with two others and those four are facing charges of first degree murder, kidnapping and conspiracy for these slayings. Now prosecutors say in new court documents that they have no question about Adams's guilt, pointing out, quote, after arrest, this defendant Tiffany Adams did provide a recorded statement to law enforcement indicating her responsibility for the death of the deceased. Now the state didn't go into detail about how far Adams's alleged involvement in the murders went, but according to an affidavit from investigators she was the last person to communicate with Veronica Butler, and the victims had been scheduled to meet up with Adams the day they vanished. Now, the women were supposed to pick up Butler's children from Tiffany Adams, who is their paternal grandmother, and they were going to have a supervised visit. Now, at the heart of this case is what law enforcement describes as a problematic custody battle between Veronica Butler and Tiffany Adams over the children that she shares with Adams' son. Now, in April, there was supposed to be a hearing that could have tipped custody in favor of Butler, and that that is what authorities believe Natasha motivated the four suspects to murder. Caitlin, with that, thank you. And here now to provide more insight, News Nation legal analyst and criminal trial attorney Sarah Azari. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us. And I know you've also been pouring through these new court documents. What is standing out to you? Yeah, so uh, Natasha, look, I'm not shaking in my boots over this uh, indication of responsibility that is being looked at as a confession. I can't tell you how many times prosecutors uh, jump up and down and scream that they have a confession. And then when you actually not just look, read the words on a piece of paper, like a transcript, but listen to the audio, it is really not a confession. So really it depends on what she said, what the context is, what the tone is, all of it needs to be considered. But that said, Natasha, I think this affidavit that was filed along with the uh, bail motion by the state is really damning. Um, it is very robust. It lays out the circumstantial evidence in this case, namely um, lies by Adams. And we know that where there's lies, there's cover up. Um, web searches that maybe by themselves are, are, you know, are benign and innocuous, but she follow up, followed up on them. So for example, search of taser pain level, and then she went and bought five stun guns and there were stun guns found near the bodies. Um, burner phones, uh, there were three burner, burner phones that she actually purchased from one Walmart that were again traced to the locations that are at issue. And then two star witnesses. Those really stood out to me, Natasha, because there is the daughter of um, Cora, one of the suspects, who essentially says that her parents went on a mission the day that these victims were missing and that they came back and made some incriminating statements to her. She is a star witness, and so is the property owner from whom um, Adams's boyfriend rents the property where the bodies were found. There's some very incriminating statements that would made to him. So there's a lot of circumstantial evidence, even if there is no confession. Interesting. I mean, and let's zero in on the, the confession itself, because it seems on its face that Tiffany made a recorded confession. Can she go back on this? I mean, it, it, you say this is not a slam dunk for the case moving forward. Yeah, it definitely isn't. You know, I, if there's, we got to listen to what what she says because this is obviously an audio, not just a, a, a manually uh, written out statement. And 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 we got to look at the context. And sometimes co co uh, confessions are forced and coerced. Sometimes they just have a completely innocuous explanation. Um, again, you know, we have to listen to what she said and be able to determine whether this is just the prosecution's interpretation that it's a confession or if it's a really unequivocal confession. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.